The presentation that follows, Java SE Embedded Development Made Easy, will show how developers already familiar with the Java Standard Edition platform can leverage that knowledge and that development paradigm to develop applications on embedded devices in a very seamless manner. A brief agenda of the presentation that follows. Number one, we'll spend some time talking to the embedded microprocessor industry and how latest developments make the notion of running full-blown Java Standard Edition on an embedded device an absolute reality. Second, we'll introduce what we like to refer to as the unofficial Java Standard Edition Embedded Software Development Kit. It includes, of course, not only a Java virtual machine suitable for an embedded device, but actual root hardware and uh, an integrated development environment. And finally, interspersed throughout the presentation, we will introduce certain topics via a series of short videos, including things like uh, demonstrating the hardware itself, showing how applications can be deployed seamlessly on these devices, uh, typical debug development cycle, and some remote monitoring. So in the microprocessor world, Moore's law is alive and well. And just as Intel has used those additional transistors to equip its processors with multiple cores, you'll see that in this slide at least, uh, the embedded manufacturers of both PowerPC and ARM architectures are following suit. So for example, taking a look at ARM, you'll see that there are both dual and quad core designs available now and coming soon that have um, clock speeds as high as 2.5 gigahertz. That is a heck of a lot of processing power to be put in such a small package with such low power. And consequently, just as Intel is uh, looking to increase its market, having dominated both the desktop and the server into the embedded space with its Atom processor, uh, ARM feels it is more than uh, competitive in the server space, uh, considering the type of horsepower it's now uh, demonstrating. And it does enjoy one advantage over Intel in that if you take a look at the power budgets, in particular, look at Intel's 8-watt Atom processor versus ARM's 250 milliwatt, an order of magnitude less or more, uh, ARM processor. Considering all the green initiatives taking place now, this is a big advantage. Now, there's a lot of activity taking place in the ARM space. One such architecture referred to as a plug computer, uh, comes from a company called Marvell. They make this architecture available to licensees, and those licensees implement. Uh, one such implementation, referred to as a Shiba plug, is our reference implementation for this presentation. The video that follows gives you a little bit more detail about that particular product. Uh, just as a rule of thumb, these these Plug computers come in many shapes and sizes and capabilities. In general, they have a 1 plus gigahertz ARMv5 processor with a half a gigabyte of memory. And there's a very large and thriving software community around here, such that there are multiple Linux distributions available for this platform, so you can pick and choose. Uh, the video that follows gives you a little bit more detail about the Shiva Bug development platform. So here is a sample implementation of the Marvel plug architecture. This comes from Global Scale. It has an American receptacle connector. And Global Scale has a, an, a European subsidiary called New IT, which offers receptacles for the various European standards. So you stand a good chance of finding a receptacle for whatever country you live in. This is equipped with a 1.2 gigahertz ARM V5 processor with 512 megabytes of RAM and 512 megabytes of flash, which of course stores the operating system and some additional storage. Now by default, the operating system that comes bundled with this takes up around half, so you have about 256 or more uh, megabytes to put applications and stuff on. Um, in addition, there is an SD card storage slot for additional storage, and uh, for advanced configurations, you can actually boot off of this to get uh, better performance and additional storage. So some other external connectors are an Ethernet uh, network connectivity, USB 2 connectivity. There are other configurations of these plug computers that have multiple Ethernet connections and multiple USB connections for gateway type functionality. Um, there are others that have SATA for external disk drives to get true server type uh, performance. 
There are others yet that have Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth, and even Zigbee. And some of the latest versions even have a HDMI, HDMI port so that you now have uh, video type capability. So we chose this particular platform because it has, uh, over and above all this, a built-in serial and JTAG interface connector. Many of the other versions do not. They actually are smaller in footprint than this, but it's pretty important, certainly when you're doing development, to have this capability. And what it gets you is uh, the ability to not only modify boot settings, but you can also reflash the kernel. You can do things like uh, get at this even though you're not network connected. Uh, all pretty important things. So again, global scale, Shiva plug development kit is what we, what we uh, use as our base reference implementation here. The way you go about booting this up is very simple. We're just going to plug it into the wall. But before that, we'll go ahead and just connect up to our network jack, which is in the wall, so that we're fully networked. And now, the plug is booting. And uh, generally speaking, this particular version boots up in around 15 seconds or so. Returning to our slide deck, the question becomes, what's required to effectively develop Java SE embedded applications on real hardware? The answer is really not a whole lot. We think just three components. Uh, the first of the components, our reference hardware via the plug computer has already been discussed. The next component that's required is a Java virtual machine, in this case, Oracle's Java SE embedded virtual machine. So how do you go about getting that for the plug computer? Well. Oracle makes available a series of binaries that you can download. What you see here is the uh, page on the Oracle website where that's located, a rather verbose URL. Your best bet probably is to simply Google for download Java SE embedded and you'll ultimately be directed to this page. We scroll down a little bit. You'll see that there are a series of binaries available for the ARM, uh, PowerPC, and x86 architectures and within each are a series of sub-architectures. In this case, the Linux plug computer is based upon the ARM v5 architecture, and there is a, a headless version, which is what our plug computer is, for, uh, for that. So to download this, you just simply click on this link and follow the steps. We'll spare you that and simply go to the um, machine now and show that Java is, in fact, installed. The way we go about uh, accessing the Java, or I should say the plug computer, is to simply SSH into the, um, the plug. It's built in by default. Uh, we're using a program called PUTTY or PuTTY. Uh, what's neat about this is you can not only create configurations for SSH, but if you wanted to, for example, log into the serial port, you can create a profile with the necessary serial um, uh, parameters to do that also. So anyway, let's go ahead and load the, um, the what's required to SSH in. In this case, we're going to log in as root. The IP address for plug is 192.168.1.226. Uh, we'll probably not see much more of that because it's very error prone. Rather, we have a, a host entry called plug, which we'll use instead. So let's go ahead and open it up. And now we're prompted with a password. We're now logged in to the plug computer. Just a few details about the plug itself. Um, first of all, we'll describe the version of Linux. In this case, it is a 2.6, pardon me, 2.6.30 kernel based upon the ARM5 TEL architecture. Memory, let's look at that. you'll see that we have a total amount of memory of roughly 512 megabytes. And lastly, this space, we're going to issue the Unix df-h command. The root file system here, although originally 512 megabytes, is now 462. That's file system overhead and some other things. And you see that currently we're using roughly half of that. So you have half free. And in fact, it's probably a little more than that because we've already installed a few applications, including the Java Merchant Machine on this particular device. <clears throat> so let's take a look at Java now. Um, it's already in the path. So if I type which Java, 
you'll see that uh, Java has been installed in the ejre1.6.0.25 directory. And if I type Java minus version, it will return the version of Java that's running, 1.6.0.25, it's hotspot. <clears throat> okay. And now, uh, one thing I want to point out is that this is truly Java SE compatible, but a lot of work has been done to optimize the fate, the space of this, the footprint of this. So let's go ahead and issue a du command in Linux and in Unix. This will return the number of kilobyte blocks that a particular directory takes up. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do it on the ejre1.6.0.25 directory. And you'll see that it comes back as 38,000, roughly 38,000, 39,000, which translates to about 38 or 39 megabytes. So that's the static footprint of Java SE embedded on this ARM device. Let's compare that to our Linux desktop, or pardon me, to, to a Windows desktop. So what we have here is, um, we'll go to the C directory, program files, excuse me, we're gonna to go to program files x86. There is a Java directory. Let's go back one, pardon me. So, so this is where the JRE, the Java runtime environment for Windows is, is housed. If we see what the properties say here, you'll notice that the size on the disk is 89.1 megabytes. So we are roughly one third the size of the full blown Java SE um, JRE on Windows for ARM. So a lot of work has been done to optimize space and memory on this particular platform. The next thing we'd like to demonstrate is because Java SE embedded is compatible with Java Standard Edition, you should be able to run many of the standard Java applications that are available on this platform with no modifications. The sample application we've chosen is the ubiquitous Apache Tomcat web server. Taking the liberty of downloading that already, sparing you some time, if you look in the root directory here, you'll see that there is an Apache Tomcat 6.0.32 directory. Uh, this is just nothing more than an unzip of the download that comes from the website with no modifications. To start up Apache, all you need to do is issue the Apache slash bin slash startup script. And we now have a Java-based web server based upon Apache running on this plug computer. Now to verify that in fact things are operating correctly, let's go ahead now and access that web server. We had mentioned earlier in the presentation that um, the IP address 192.168.1.226 has been replaced with a host name called plug. So we'll HTTP there, plug at port 8080. And lo and behold, we are now talking to the plug at that port, the Apache Tomcat server. Let's verify that indeed um, it is what it says it is. You'll see that uh, Apache 6.0.32 is running on a particular VM version. Uh, it's, an, it's, it's, it's a Linux ARM type architecture, so this is in fact our plug computer. Apache comes bundled with a few uh, applications already, so let's take a look at them and see if we can run an application or two. So here are some examples here. In particular, there are servlets and JSPs. Sample the classic Hello World servlet works fine. Uh, something a little bit more involved. We'll, we'll pass a cookie back to the browser. So uh, cookies require a name value pair. The name we'll choose is color, and the value associated with the color is yellow. When we send this, you see that the cookie is indeed sent to the server. Uh, returning back, we want to see that indeed JSPs work also. So there's a basic arithmetic servlet which does some expression evaluation. So there you have it. In a matter of uh, seconds or minutes for downloading, we have a web server set up that runs in five watts of power that is extremely powerful. The third component of our Java SE embedded SDK involves the inclusion of a modern IDE or integrated development environment. The second half of this presentation will cover how we can utilize NetBeans productively in a Java SE embedded environment.